This is NGC 7822. I had no idea it even existed until last night. My app just showed me this hidden nebula, perfect for my setup, visible tonight, and almost nobody photographs it. Let me show you anyway how my app works. Here's how I used to do this. Open Stellarium, scroll through a list of objects, check if it's visible tonight, check the moon phase, check if it fits my focal length, and after 20 minutes or so of this, I'd end up shooting M31 again for the seventh time. Don't get me wrong, I love Andromeda and it's a great target to, to shoot, but I wanted to shoot something new. So I built this. It's called the Astro Target and it does three things automatically. One, it filters what's visible tonight from my exact location. It matches my telescope's field of view. And three, it ranks them by difficulty, beginner, intermediate, advanced. It also gives me some notes on imaging the target and a little bit of information. But here's the real game changer. I added discovery mode, which shows me objects almost nobody photographs, hidden gems that are actually perfect for my setup. Look at this, the headphone nebula, Lower's Nebula and the Witch Head Nebula. The Headphone Nebula, or Jones Emerson 1, I'd never heard of before. But look at the information I've got. The optimal time to image this would be 4 a.m. in the morning. That's when it's at the highest point in the sky. And it also gives me the coordinates, the RA and DEC coordinates, so I can easily find the object. It also tells me that it's not an easy target it's quite challenging from a bottle five sky and that i'll need many hours of total exposure time to capture this it's a fairly large target and it's matched it to my field of view and if i want to i can click on the more information link at the bottom to find out more and look at this also the witch head nebula ic2118 and it tells me I need to image this around 1.30 in the morning. And you know that it's a very large but perfectly matched image for my field of view. And it's also a faint reflection nebula that it will be a challenge to separate it from the sky glow. So it's giving me most of the information that I need to my imaging session and to decide whether this is the target I'm going to image tonight. Okay, so first I choose discovery mode and I set my sky location. For me, it's a suburban sky, portal five, and then my focal length here, 650 millimeters. The sensor width and sensor height are automatically filled in because I previously entered my camera. And now I choose my target preferences I don't want all of these, so I'll just choose Nebula, Find Targets, and off we go. We just wait one or two moments, and then this will come up with our six targets. It didn't take very long at all. Okay, so let's have a look now. So, Cave Nebula and California Nebula, NGC 7822, and this is the question mark nebula um optimal time so i should be imaging it around 1 a.m at the op optimal time and the moon is a long distance away it's also given the ra and the deck coordinates so i can easily find the object it tells me all i need to know about imaging and framing the image and then pressing more information will bring up the wikipedia page it gives me all the information I need there and some, some nice images as well. So instead of winging it every clear night, I now have a... And that's how I'm going from shooting the same 10 objects over and over to capturing more than 40 different targets this year. Here's the real difference, the manual method. It took me 13 minutes to pick the same target I've shot before. And with the discovery mode, 
it took me just 85 seconds to find something completely new to shoot. And look at the results. This is my seventh Andromeda image. This is my first question mark nebula. Which one would you rather shoot? Plus, the app should give you several new targets so that you can multiple nights ahead. <music> Now, full transparency, this app is still in beta. I built it for myself because I was frustrated with the manual process. But if you want to try it, I've put a link in the description. It's free right now while I'm testing it out. The only catch, it currently works best for Northern Hemisphere targets. I'm still adding Southern Hemisphere objects. If you have any feedback or find bugs, please drop a comment. I'm actively trying to improve this based on what you need. So please do share your thoughts below. And if you are in the Southern Hemisphere and want early access when those targets are added, please request this in the comments below and I'll let you know when I have it ready. So if you're like me and tired of shooting the same targets or just want to discover objects you didn't even know existed, try discovery mode in my Astro app. The link is below. And if you want to see how these images turn out, be sure to subscribe and I'll show you the results in an upcoming video. And finally, just before I go, I'd like to ask you one question. What's the most obscure deep sky object you've ever shot? I'm curious if anyone's captured any of these targets before, and I'd love you to share your results with us. Clear skies, and I'll see you in the next one.